Hey, what's up YouTube and welcome to my channel, Ask Jimmy Smith. Today, I'm going to be talking about a topic that is actually a little bit more of in depth into Amazon and how the back end of Amazon works from a buy box perspective. Uh, and so if you have been selling on Amazon for any length of time, you should know what the buy box is. And I'm gonna be going through buy box theory and specifically a chart that I found uh, from somebody that I followed for a long time named Chris Grant from cleartheshelf.com. And Chris had posted this. I can't actually remember where I found it, uh, but it's a chart that was put together by somebody that has a good amount of inner knowledge at Amazon on how the buy box works, what factors are critically important in gaining the buy box so that you can get more sales and more eyeballs on your particular listing for the product. So I'm excited to share that with you. But just in case you don't know what the buy box is, that is what is shown to a customer as the first option to purchase whenever they click on a product listing. So typically it will say buy it now at this price uh, and it will just have a random seller there and their product. And Amazon bases that on a ton of different factors, which we're going to go through. Now, many consumers and new sellers don't realize that this buy box rotates based on those factors, whether it's location, whether it's pricing, whether it's the type of seller you are, all these different things come into play. And so that's why I'm excited to show you this chart uh, and give a little bit more uh, background and information into what goes into the buy box so that you can get it more often knowing this information. Now, Amazon does not release this data publicly. This is not something that is even public knowledge. So it could be wrong on some pieces of information, but I thought it was fairly accurate. So did Chris. And so I want to share it here uh, with all of you and so that you can use it, take it into further consideration with your personal products. Additionally, realize that things can change with the buy box and how Amazon calculates it since it is a proprietary algorithm that they use, probably some sort of artificial intelligence that they have in the background to doing this also. So just realize it could change in the future. But as of right now in 20 2023, I believe this is fairly accurate. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, now you can see here, I'm actually gonna zoom in. This is the chart, but uh, from an out macro perspective, uh, you can see on this, the far right side, it says impact on buy box. And it goes from very high to high to medium and then to low. And so this is very important to me because then you can focus on different factors that are most important. So let me zoom in. Uh, on this particular page. You can see here, so fulfillment method is currently ranked at very high. And really what that is, is how the seller ships the item, whether you are a fulfilled by Amazon seller, uh, whether you're a seller fulfilled prime, whether you're fulfilled by merchant, uh, just in general, and not a prime seller fulfilled option. And so this is the one that is showing as the most impactful currently on the buy box. Now, Amazon goes through litigation at different points, and I believe they've been pressed in different countries as well as in the United States about this preference, the preferential treatment that they give to sellers that are paying to be on the platform more. Uh, and so that may end up changing the future, but currently being FBA or seller fulfilled prime is the best way to win the buy box. If you're an FBM or fulfilled by merchant seller that isn't doing this on a prime scale or selling it or shipping it within two days, then you're gonna have less of a chance to win the buy box. So this is the best way to win the buy box based off of the fulfillment method and and it impacts that extremely high. It's why I typically say being an FBA seller is way better than being an FBM seller, unless you have the capability and capacity to ensure prime delivery within two days on all of your products from your warehouse. So I love FBA, that's always been and will always most likely be my recommendation. Now, landed price, what that means, it's the second option. It's the second, I wouldn't say it's the second most high, uh, but it is on the higher end scale. Landed price is the total price plus shipping. So if you are an FBA seller, it could just be $20 and free shipping. If you're a seller fulfilled prime, it could be $20 and free shipping. But if you're merchant fulfilled or fulfilled by merchant FBM, it could be $15 plus $5 shipping, or it could be that you give free shipping rates as well. Just really depends. But the landed price is the next most important factor. The lower is better. So that's the best way to win the buy box. The cheaper you are, obviously Amazon's going to give better treatment to those sellers. Same with the buy box, just in general, lower is better. And then time period that impacts the metric 
current. So uh, whatever your current price is, that's what most important. They don't care about your average price. They don't care about what it was last week. They care about the current one. These two are fairly obvious in the total impact of the buy box calculation. Next is perfect order percentage. Now, this is something that I haven't heard discussed much, but it's uh, fairly obvious, which is the overall percentage of perfect orders. Uh, the best way to win is to have 100% uh, perfect order percentage. Uh, if you want to be in buy box uh, consideration, you need to have above 95%. Uh, and so they're actually going to look at the last 90 days. It could be like order defect rates. It could be uh, issues with sending counterfeit products, that kind of stuff. So uh, if you are sending bad products, this is going to be hurt overall. Plus, uh, I believe feedback, which is down here, probably somewhat plays into that perfect order percentage. I may be wrong, but I actually like this. It's fairly high. So make sure that the products you're sending uh, are good and that you aren't sending counterfeit or broken products to customers. The next one is shipping time, uh, and which is the time that it takes to ship the item. That's fairly obvious. And the best way to win the buy box is up to two days, which is why the fulfillment method of FBA or seller fulfilled prime is so important. But if you want to be in consideration for the buy box, it can't be more than 14 days. So if for whatever reason, maybe you try to do, you've got a wholesale distributor that you're shipping from the wholesale warehouse to a customer and it takes 20 or 30 days, that is a problem. So you want to make sure that you're under two weeks and as best to get the buy box to be up to two days, which is why FBA and Seller Fulfilled Prime is so important. Uh, and then obviously that is your current shipping time. So these are all the most high options. After that, we get into a bunch of medium options. I believe there are seven different medium options, but if you're looking to impact the buy box most, you wanna make sure that you are at a fast shipping time, uh, utilizing FBA, have a decently good price. You don't always have to be the cheapest because of these other factors we're gonna talk about, but the cheaper that you can be, obviously the better uh, for from Amazon's perspective anyway. We have seen tons of success from students of mine as well as people that I've just seen in the Amazon space also selling products at higher than the buy box price and doing very well at that. So price is not the only consideration. Keep that in mind. Uh, and then having a good order percentage uh, above 95% is also very important. So they know you're a good seller selling good products. Now, order defect rate, I mentioned that for the perfect order percentage. I could be wrong on really what that is then uh, because it talks about the overall percentage of perfect orders, but I thought that the order defect rate might um, impact that. I could be wrong. But here you can see that order defect rate is your negative feedback plus your claims plus your chargeback rate. And I believe claims would be your A to Z guarantee claims. And so that is where order defect rate comes into play. It, the best chance to win is at 0%. You have no issues there. Uh, and then if you want to be in buy box consideration, you need to be at 1% or less. So uh, if this is something that you're over 1%, you're at 2 or 3% because of negative feedback or A to Z claims or chargebacks, that is where you can get into trouble. And you need to focus on selling more products, getting your orders into the hands of the customers in a good way. And they look at your last 90 days. So this is medium. Uh, it's not the most impactful, but it is impactful. Next would be your feedback score, which is the feedback that the seller has received. This is something that I recommend checking daily. Uh, the higher your feedback is, the better. Uh, and he, this, this is also showing as higher is better just to be in consideration. I have always heard that if you're below 80% feedback, you're not gonna get the buy box. May or may not be true. But to really be in consideration, you want to be at 95% or higher. That's what I have heard. Uh, they're just putting the higher is better. Typically, what I see for most sellers uh, that have been doing this for a while uh, is above 98% uh, for the last 90 days or even the last year for many sellers. Uh, so that is something that should be the metric you're looking to be at is above 95 and preferably above 98% because they do look at the last 365 days of your seller feedback. Now, when you're checking your seller feedback, you can get things automatically removed if it is based on price, if it's based on shipping, if it was done through FBA anyway. Also, if it's based on the particular product, you can get those automatically removed from Amazon. So you want to check that every day to make sure you're staying on top of your feedback score. Because if you're a new seller and you get one bad feedback and you're not checking it, that could drop you from a 100% down to a 90% and that could really impact your buy box percentage. So make sure to keep up with it. Try to get those things removed automatically um, as much as possible. And the best way to do that is by also increasing your feedback through more orders and sales and by making sure you're shipping in good products with good packaging so that you aren't getting claims. Now, on-time delivery is the next one. 
orders that were delivered on time. 100% is what you need for the buy box. That's why I believe FBA is the best way to go about it because then it kind of is guaranteed in Amazon's eyes that if it's through FBA, it's not our fault. So they view that as 100%. 97% or higher if you are doing merchant fulfilled, that is important. And so you just wanna make sure that your shipping times are good, your handling times are also good and get those things out. They look at the last 30 days. Valid tracking rate. Again, if you're doing fulfilled by merchant, tracking numbers provided for shipped orders. I always recommend using Amazon's uh, preferred shipping partners if you're doing fulfilled by merchant stuff because that is where Amazon will guarantee uh, their side of the shipping, so to speak. If you were to get an A to Z claim and you bought the shipping through Amazon's carriers and it didn't show up, Amazon will side with you and they will refund the customer out of their own pocket. It's not going to hurt your metrics. But if you were to purchase tracking and shipping outside of Amazon, that can really hurt you if something doesn't show up. So highly recommend if you're doing fulfilled by merchant to buy it through Amazon if you want to make sure that your tracking rate and your A to Z claims are good to go. 100% is what's required. What's best for the buy box, 95% or higher is what is required to even be in the buy box within the last 30 days. Late shipment rate would be orders shipped past the expected ship date. So if uh, again, fulfilled by merchant stuff, if you're about a few days behind the expected ship date, that's going to be a problem. So you need to make sure to get these things out as fast as possible that you have the manpower to do it. Again, this is where FBA, in my opinion, is extremely superior in ensuring that you're going to do a great job of getting those orders out because Amazon will will do that for you and you won't be penalized if they take a while to zero percent uh, late shipment is what's best for the buy box and less than four percent is what is required to be consideration within the last 30 days now response time is how long it takes the seller to respond to the customer so if you're getting customer inquiries uh, and they're asking questions to you you need to make sure that you're responding to them the best availability for the buy box is up to 12 hours that you're getting a question or an inquiry from a customer you're responding right away 24 hours or less is what's required if it's starts to go over 24 hours, your account will be penalized. And Amazon looks at the last 90 days of that history as well as a metric for the buy box. Next would be customer feedback. And this is the last one showing in the medium chart, customer feedback, number of customers that have given you feedback. So a higher percentage is better. Uh, again, higher is better to even be in consideration. This is one I've never really heard of, that the percentage of feedback is important in terms of, okay, you had uh, a lot of feedback from your products, but hey, uh, that's something to focus on. If you're trying to get more feedback for your seller account, you can go and use tools to do that. You can request feedback through Amazon for free. Make sure whatever tools you use are completely within Amazon's terms of service. Otherwise they can get angry and uh, you might break their terms of service by requesting feedback in a bad way. So make sure whatever companies you use are legitimate. Uh, I've never used one. I've always recommend just sell more stuff, You know, go out, buy things that move really fast. Maybe they don't make a bunch of money, but if they're moving fast, you're naturally going to get more feedback on your orders. Uh, and that is one way that you could do it if you had essentially like a loss leader for your account or even something you made five or 10% ROI on that you were willing to just sell hundreds of them a month and you don't care that you're making 50 cents a piece. Uh, it's up to you, uh, but that is one good way to get feedback as well and a higher percentage. All right, then we're into the low category, which this one kind of surprises me. I thought that specifically the one that we're going to talk about first, the inventory, I thought this would have been higher, but uh, you know, everyone can have their own opinions. I I would assume that it was higher. Inventory is how often the seller runs out of stock. The lower that you run out of stock, the better. Um, and there's no particular metric for that. So if you are doing something like replenishable products or arbitrage and you're constantly running out of stock, that is why in your IPI score, and I know this is getting real detailed for people that are new, there's an IPI score, your inventory performance index on Amazon. You need to be hiding restock recommendations and closing out listings as you're done selling because it can hurt your buy box percentage. Now, if you sell enough stuff, Amazon doesn't take this into much consideration. That's why it's a low end of the spectrum, focus on all the other things first. But the lower amount of times that you run off stock, the better. It's a weird balance of trying to take care of the amount of inventory that you are selling through, as well as the fees that Amazon charges. You don't want to over order, et cetera. So if you're doing arbitrage or you're doing wholesale, one software that really can help with this, it's one that I helped create. It's called Replen Dashboard. If you go to replendashboard.com, you can do a free trial. There's actually up to 500 orders free for your 
first 500 orders. So if you're a new account, that can take six months. If you're an established account, you've got a 30 day option as well. But ultimately making sure that you've got a good handle on your replenishments for your inventory is very important for Amazon and they look at the last 90 days as well. Cancellation rate is how often a seller cancels an order. So that falls back to fulfilled by merchant. You want a 0% cancellation rate is best. Two and a half percent or less is what's required. And again, they look at the last 90 days for whatever reason, somebody ordered a merchant fulfilled product and you don't have it, or you realize it's damaged or it's expired and you cancel an order. That is where this comes into play. Again, fulfilled by merchant. And then refund rate is how often customers ask for a refund. Pretty obvious. Uh, the lower is better. There's no specific metric for that. And they look at the last 90 days. Again, that just goes to show the quality of the products that you're sending in. So while it's not something that is high on the list, it is something that you still need to focus on because it goes into play with your buy box percentage. So this is all great stuff. I really love this chart. Uh, if I can, I'm going to find a place and I'll put the link below where you can access this. I may just put it up on my Ask Jimmy Smith Instagram uh, account. If you want to find me on at Ask Jimmy Smith on Instagram, you can do that. Uh, if you want it another way, then you can just post a comment or email me, whatever's easiest. But reach out to me on my website at AskJimmySmith.com and I can send you uh, this file so that you can store it and look at it as well. But again, I actually got this. This isn't my own creation. <laughs> Chris Grant from ClearTheShelf.com is where I got this. He's a great guy, great seller, highly trusted in the industry. I probably should talk to him more, uh, but he's somebody that I highly respect and uh, like to get his updates every so often as well. And he got it from somebody else. So I don't know where this thing's from, but ultimately uh, that's where I got it. So I'm trying to, you know, give kind of a, a chain of custody, so to speak, with this thing. So I really love this. Uh, there are a couple other factors that I think actually come into play that uh, isn't on here and really the main one uh, that I believe is location of where your products get shipped, right? So if I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, and I ship my products to a few different warehouses and a customer in California is buying that product and my product happens to be in a warehouse that's near uh, their location, I believe I'll get the buy box even if my price is higher due to this fulfillment method and the ability to get the shipping time there quicker because Amazon handles that fulfillment. Whereas if somebody in is in California buying a product, another seller has their product in Florida somewhere. Well, Amazon's not going to show that seller most likely if there are closer options to that customer. So that's not something we can control, but I do believe that that does also affect the buy box, which is why you can price higher if you'd like to do that and get sales because the location is so important for Amazon to be able to fulfill on their prime promises, make customers happy, get products to them. But all of these other things that you can control, all of these other things that you are a part of, that's what this chart is for. And so that is why these pieces of information are so important. Focus on these, especially the high and very high ones, as well as the medium ones. A lot, actually, I feel like quite a few of these would be uh, removed if you were an FBA seller. You know, that, that concern just gets taken away, like on-time delivery, valid tracking rates, late shipment rates, all of that is uh, removed because you're an FBA seller and Amazon handles that anyway. So that's my opinion on this. I really like it. Let me know your thoughts. What else do you think factors into the buy box? How else can I help you uh, on this channel? Please check out my other videos, uh, like, share, subscribe, all of that fun stuff. But I uh, hope this video helped you and blessed you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day and a blessed rest of your week.